Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Betty, owner and creator of Betty's Custom Designs here on uh, YouTube, Etsy, Facebook, and Instagram. And um, yes, I am still in my bedroom, but we do have AC, um, so that is a good thing. Um, but I was already in my bedroom with everything working, and so I figured um, I may as well just try go ahead and try and get the video done for you guys. And I, as you can see, I am still working on this because it is giving me a fit tonight. Um, so I guess we can do some... Um, digital designing. I have no clue what to do. I have nothing in mind. I don't even know what to do, where to begin. Um, so with that being said, I guess we can just jump right into it. Um, I do have AC. That is a wonderful thing. <clears throat> I cannot tell you how good it feels to have AC again, especially in this Florida humidity. It has been rough, but we are back in business. Um, so I'm doing what I normally do where I go um, into my Photoshop. I am going to um, go to create new. Um, I already have it at 11 by eight and a half with a white background. And so we've just pulled that in. Um, I don't know, I bet my little doohickey that I used, my little charger is probably still, not my charger, I can't even talk straight, you guys, my little um, <clears throat> hard drive was still in my purse, so let's just see if I have anything on here that I can maybe pull some inspiration from. I just don't know at this point. Um, the whole AC thing just kind of threw me for a loop. Um, yeah, it's been quite crazy to say the least. Um, I do have some Beatrix Potter. Let's work on some Beatrix Potter for my mother-in-law. Um, so let me see, what image do I want to pull? Let's pull the classic Peter Rabbit here. Now the first thing I want to do is I have my Peter Rabbit here, but I'm not going to want to keep the background white um, for whenever I'm working on it. If something, um, I happen to erase a little too much or something like that, I want it to at least blend in. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on my um, eyedropper tool. Um, so I've got it selected and now I can drag it and I can pull it to a color that I want to use for the background. And I'm going with a, um, that was not as light of a green as I wanted. I am going with maybe like this really light green. I'm going to go back over here to where I have um, the white um, page layer. I've selected it and now I'm going to select the paint bucket and I'm just going to, um, fill that page with that green color from Peter Rabbit. So I've selected Peter Rabbit again and I'm going to actually do it where I can select him. Now how do I want to do this page? Um, you know, I guess let's just get started and then just like with everything else that I do, once I get started I'll kind of hopefully figure out where to go with it. So you guys know um, from watching my um, Photoshop videos by now, you guys know that I cannot stand, for the most part, I don't like those harsh lines. So I've selected my paintbrush. It is still on clear. And let me see, it should be on mixed splatter, and it is. So now I'm just going to go right here and I'm just gonna get rid of those harsh lines. That's all I really want to do right now because I still have no idea um, what direction I want to take this. So 
while I'm doing this, I'm just like thinking and trying and hoping and praying that something will come to me. But I don't know. It has just been one of those kind of days. Because first of all, let me tell you, while I'm doing this, let me tell you, I had to go and have a little chat with uh, the postmaster at our local post office here. Um, because I've had a few packages returned that I knew there was no way that they should have been returned because I always um, check with uh, the USPS website. I make sure that I do, um, you know, I, I weigh all of my stuff <clears throat> and I make sure that I have everything in order before I send something out. And that's why, um, if you'll notice on my um, Etsy store, I've been able to offer pretty reasonable shipping. Um, and it's because I have researched and I have found out how and you know what's the best way to ship. So, like I said, I've had a few packages that were returned to me and saying that I owed more, um, more postage and that I was trying to ship items as though they were large envelopes when, in fact, they were packages and you name it. I mean, all kinds of stuff. And so, because I was off work today um, for them to install my AC, I actually had some time to go back through the website, the USPS website, just comb through it. And I wanted to make sure, you know, is it something that I'm doing wrong? Because if it is, you know, I need to correct it. Or is it something that the post office is doing wrong? So I looked at everything and sure enough, everything was, I was doing it correctly. So I had some packages that I needed to mail today and I um, left the house for a few minutes and I went to the post office and I had them packaged in my little um, poly bags um, and it was paper. It was the uh, coffee dyed paper. So my packages, my little poly bags were, um, nine by 12 and most of them ranged between five to six ounces that was the most that one 6.1 ounces i apologize and um they were not rigid they were flexible so according to the post office website usps.gov um shipping should have been two dollars per package plus um, because they were in a poly bag which made them uh, non-machinable, I would need to pay an additional 20 cents. So not a big deal. I need that going in. So I get to, and while I'm talking, you guys, I, hopefully you, you can see what I'm doing to see. I'm just pulling in some Peter Rabbit images and I'm keeping this one as the main focal point. These are kind of just going into the background. So I'm going to keep doing that for this page, I think. So anyway, I go into the um, post office and I go um, up to the counter and I said, you know, I need to mail these. And she starts, the lady that was doing it, she starts a fixing postage of, I think the cheapest one she tried to put on there was $5.20. And I said, um, why is that 520? I said, it should only be a little over two. And she said, oh, because these are packages. They're not first class mail. I said, they're not packages. I said, they are first class mail. Oh, no, 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 they're not. Let me tell you, know, let me get my manager. So the manager comes over. He should know, right? It's his job. He should know what it costs and what is considered a package and what is considered a flat. And so he tells me, he says, no, because it is in this poly bag and because it is flexible, it is not a flat. It is actually a package and you have to send it out using um, package um, rates. And I said, okay, I said, look, I'm not doing that. I said, so tell me 
exactly what I need in order to be able to mail this as flats. And he said, um, and he pointed to some, uh, I think it was called, um, oh, I don't even remember the name of it, but it was some envelope type things that they had hanging on the wall, $2 a piece. And he said, those are what you need to send it out in. And uh, he said, you send it out in that and we can give you the first class mail rates. I said, okay. I said, I'll go take a look at them. I said, so you're telling me that if I send it out in those, then it's first class mail. He said, yeah, because they're rigid. Okay, I gotcha. So I was not gonna pay $2 for an envelope because I mean, what was the point? If I'm gonna pay a little over $2 for postage and then pay $2 for an envelope, you know, no. So I drove straight to Office Depot and I started looking for envelopes like he said I needed, ready posts, that's what the envelopes were that he was showing me. So I started looking for envelopes that I needed and um, Target didn't have anything that said ready post or anything um, similar, you know, to what the post office had there. So I got back on the USPS website um, trying to find out, okay, if Office Depot doesn't have that, then what's the next best thing that I can use um, in order to get this package, you know, the packages mailed? Well, much to my surprise, or not, <laughs> I was correct in what I was thinking. Um, the, according to the USPS website, if the package is rigid, it is automatically considered a package, and it is not considered a flat. The only way it can be considered a flat is it must be flexible. And so I got to reading on, and I said, you know, well, maybe because it was in the poly bag, he said the poly bag is the reason why he couldn't consider it um, a flat. Nope. Even the postage postal rules stated that um, if it was in a poly bag, then it would be considered non-machinable. And if it was non-machinable, I could still pay first class postage, but then I would have to pay that 20 cents for the non-machinable fee. So let me tell you, by this time I'm hot. I'm like furious. So I, um, and I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of fading the stuff into the background a little bit. Um, because again, I really want um, Peter Rabbit to be like my main focal point, but I want to have some other images on the page. So that's all I'm doing. So anyway, I, um, I purchased a pack or a case of the 9 by 12 catalog envelopes and I came home and I did go ahead and um, I did repackage one and then I said you know what I'm not doing that because <coughs> excuse me you know I have the postal rules that says what I have suffices what I have is a flat and, you know, there was no, I was not going to do that because he didn't know his job. So, as soon as they got done with the AC, I went ahead and I, I did, like I said, I did repackage the one. Um, and that was before, our, you know, it just, it hit me. And, and while I'm talking, I'm going to go see if I can find something that says Peter Rabbit, um, some kind of writing um, that's in the public domain, um, something like out of the book or something. Um, so anyway, I, um, I called my husband. I was like, um, you know, you may end up bailing me out of jail or not because me and my little attitude, um, I am not about to do this. And um, so I go up to the post office 
And let me tell you, I was ready for bear. I, I mean, I they could have, I, I meant, I meant that I was going to be able to melt. And this is on the public domain, so that's why I am using this right now. Um, so anyway, I went up there and I had, I had printed the postage rules out. Um, I was not going to take, you know, just me telling him what it said. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I meant that, um, I was going to, I, I had all my evidence in hand. So I go up there and I wait and I finally get to the counter and guess what? It's the manager that's going to help me out. And I said, yeah, I said, um, I was here earlier and you told me that I had to mail these as, um, a package and not as a flat. I said, but they're actually flats. And he said, no, these are packages. I said, well, and I pulled out the, um, the, um, what do you call it? The pages that I had printed out from USPS that had the rule governing what was a package and what was a flat. I had it all highlighted. They kept it or else I would show it to you because I guess, um, hmm, I guess they wanted to, <laughs> I don't know, maybe they're going to use it for training. Who knows? So I said right here, it says that if my package or if it is, um, rigid, it is not a flat, which he told me completely opposite. He said it had to be rigid for it to be considered a flat. And so, oh, look how pretty that is. Is this on the, I don't know if this is public domain. I need to check into that before I go to use that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, like I said, he had told me that if it was rigid, it was a flat. If it was flexible, it could possibly be considered, um, uh, if it was flexible, it was a package. So, I was like, no, sir. I said, I hate to tell you, but you're wrong. And he said, well, I'm not mailing it for you. And I told him, I said, but the website, the USPS website says that this is correct. He said, I don't care. I've been doing this all of this time. He said, um, I've done this for so many years. He said, I'm telling you that that's not a flat. It is a package. I said, well, I'm telling you that your website, the United States Postal Service website, clearly says, clearly says that what I have is a flat and it cost me $2 to mail it plus a um, non-machinable stamp. Oh no, because it's not machinable, you're going to have to pay for the package. I said, no, I'm not. So anyway, he finally, he says, well, I'm not mailing it. He said, I'm going to send you down to the end counter. He said, this is my guy that does this kind of stuff. He's the guru at this. I said, I don't care. Whatever you got to do, let's do it. So he sends me down to the counter. And before I could even get down there good, he's like telling the guy, he said, um, he, he meets him there and I'm on public domain now. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, he meets the guy over there before I even get there. And he said, um, she's trying to mail this as a flat and it is clearly a package because our, um, machines are just going to grab it and it's going to rip her package apart. And then she's going to be upset with us and whatever. Okay, dude, I gotcha. And my internet is going crazy because it's not wanting to do this. So you know what I'm going to do? I am going to just get off of the internet for right this minute. There's more than one way to handle this. Um, or maybe not. <laughs> so, needless to say, I, you know, I showed the guy the same thing. And I was like, look, I'm trying to mail this. It's a flat that clearly says, um, you know, that it's a flat. It should be $2.00 plus the 20 cent non-machinable fee. And mind you, I had not done anything um, different other than the one. And he says, yeah, these are considered flats. Uh, yeah, hello, I knew they were. Yeah, so anyway, all of that to say this, 
I got my packages mailed and I mailed them at the rates rate for flats and I had the joy of you know him having to see that I was correct and he was wrong yeah he was not happy with me but I really didn't care they had already done that to me a while back and um I was in a hurry the last time that I mailed the packages like that. And because I was in a hurry, I was not, um, I wasn't going to fight the issue. And I'm gonna pull this up to the top of the page and then I can do, you know how I like to do where I'll um, kind of erase some of it. So that's what I'm gonna do. But anyway, because I was in a hurry, I, um, I did not fuss with them. I didn't take time to pitch a fit with them and push the issue. And I paid a lot more in postage than what I should have. But today, I had that time. I knew that I was correct. And there was not, I was not leaving there until my packages were mailed. Or my flats, should I say. I was not leaving there until my flats were shipped and shipped for the proper amount. So, that, I handled it because I was not a happy camper. You start messing with my money now, we got some, you know, and the thing is, I, I made sure, I checked everything out, um, before I put that shipping charge on my items in my Etsy store. Um, because I wanted to be, a, I did not want to go charging my customers an astronomical amount to ship. And then when I go to ship, you know, it's nothing even remotely near what I charged. But at the same time, in the same token, I didn't want to put shipping as very little and then go to ship and you know, it come out of pocket. Okay, guys, I think this page is done. I really do like this page. So we're just gonna save it the same thing I normally do. Save as a JPEG, save image. Let's see if we got time to do one more with me running my mouth like I am. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I make sure um, anytime that I'm doing something like that, I always wanna make sure that I have done the best that I can to find the uh, best way to ship something, um, the best cost for my customers. Again, I'm just pulling in one of the colors from Peter Rabbit himself, and I'm going with a, like a light blue color. And I'm going back to the white background, I'm going to the paintbrush, and I'm just gonna click on it. Now I'm gonna go back up here to this photo of the board game. This was on public domain, so I can use this one. Um, but anyway, I just, it, it just got, got me all in a bad mood because, it, number one, it's not my job to educate them as to the difference between a package and a flat. You know, that's, that's on them. But if I did not want to pay $5.20, versus two dollars and twenty cents then I realized I was going to have to educate them and educate them I did <laughs> see that's a side of me you guys have not seen all of y'all talking about how sweet I am mm -hmm. and I am sweet and chill if you say anything you're gonna find out I can be sweet. I can be very sweet. Just don't push me. <laughs> and that postman, he he pushed me today. I mean, and it's been ongoing though. Like I cannot tell you how many packages I've received back, and um, you know I would always refund my customers and then still send them the package. But um, probably six or seven. Oh, but now, mm -mm. 
Yeah, you know, nope, it's on. I don't think I'll have to worry about that anymore, though. Because, oh, man, look at this. My Photoshop has decided it's going to spaz out on me. It done this earlier. So I'm just going to, like, close everything out for a moment. Um, yeah, it was just... Okay, guys. There we go. I just was not a happy camper. Don't, don't take advantage of me. And I don't know if maybe they get their ratings by how much revenue they bring in or I don't know. I don't even want to think like that. But I just was not happy. And I knew that my my customers needed and wanted their stuff right away and I don't know. It was just one of them days. Whew. That can get my blood boiling in a quick with a quickness. Do not push me. Do not especially if it's your job. Uh uh. I do not need to be doing your job for you. So anyway, I am just now that I've got, you know, my little stepping down off my little soapbox. I am just kind of pulling um I found a few public domain images. I found a few more public domain images, but um my internet or something is giving me a fit, so I don't know if I'll be able to get them tonight. Um but that's all I'm doing is just pulling some public domain images. Um and even with the public domain, somebody did ask me this. I honestly don't know if you have to change it, the 40% um, on um, images that are in the public domain. I will tell you that I will still, I still change it at least 40%, even if it is in the public domain, just simply because I don't want to stress about copyright infringement or something like that. I want to make sure that I have all of my bases covered. Um, to me, it's a lot easier to just go ahead and change something, the 40%, and not have to be worried, um, rather than taking the chance of um, not changing something and then, um, you know, get some sort of letter or something saying, hey, you know, you're using an image and you're not supposed to use it like that. Um, so I just, I, I prefer not to take that risk. Um, what you do, you know, that's on you, but just know that if you, if you don't change it, um, you know, I guess there is the possibility that somebody could come back and say, um, copyright infringement or, you know, whatever. So I just, I would just prefer to just keep it. You know, it's really not that difficult to change it 40%. Um, and you can, you know, if you've watched any of my um, tutorials on the Photoshop, you will see that it, it is pretty easy to change um, 40%, um, 40%. So I just use that 40 the 40% is the industry standard to change something. Um, like if you by, um, or if you're a member of some of the um, different sites like uh, Graphics Fairy or um, Fab PNG or Raw Pixel, um, I think it's Envato Elements, all of those different ones, the industry standard is that you must change it 40% to be able to use it in your own stuff. So because that industry standard is out there, that's what I use for my own standard. Um, whenever I am doing a design, that way I know, I know that I'm okay. Um, I know that I comply with all of the rules and, um, you know, regulations, whatever, whoever monitors and controls it. At least that way I know I don't, I'm not looking over my shoulder wondering, um, when I'm going to get a cease and desist letter or something, because I just, I would prefer, I prefer to just keep things on the up and up from the beginning. 
Um, it's just a lot less stress for me. And that's what matters is I just, I've had enough stress in my life. I don't need any more stress. Um, so all I'm doing right now, I'm just making, I don't know, I'm just, I guess it's more like collage. And you guys know that I hate doing collage on, um, like on tags and, you know, that kind of stuff because that is so not in my comfort zone. But it's funny because whenever I am working in Photoshop, I'm almost always flying by the seat of my pants. And I never have, like, a preconceived, I don't know, yeah. I don't mind doing the collage on the paper. It, I mean, on the Photoshop. And that's, that's just so weird to me that, you know, on, on, I guess, paper, it's, I don't know, it's very intimidating to me. But once I get it on to Photoshop, it's just like, I know what I'm going to do, you know, I don't have anything planned out, but I feel more confident about um, making a decision of where I'm going to place something or, I don't know, it's just crazy. Because um, it's just so out of character for me. So I'm just going to go back over this just a little bit. This is that first page that we put down. Just simply because there was a lot of kind of like bright colors in it that really looked good. But as I'm adding other stuff, I think it is just a little bit too, it was a little too much. And the same thing with the um, Peter Rabbit and this garden scene. It's just a little too bright for what I, to go with the other stuff. So I just, you know, took, took the opacity um, up a little bit. Uh, or down a little bit, I should say. God, I can't even talk. And I think I'm going to move. Um, not that. That's not what I want to move. I want to move um, this page here. I want to move it down this way a little more. And you guys know that I have not studied any kind of digital design or anything like that. Um, I do not know the proper terms or the proper um, whatever you want to call it to make sure that, um, I, I want to say, I've heard somebody say like two and three and that you got to have two thirds and a, I don't know. That's just stuff I don't know. I don't really need it. I don't need to know that kind of stuff as long as the paper looks good to me. That's what matters. And so I actually, I think I like that page too. So we're going to export that one. Okay, so we have those two exported. I am just gonna go up here. Now I'm in Canva. And you know, I've told you guys before that I use Canva, Photoshop, and Illustrator. Um, so I just done a, a blank or a new document, 11 by eight and a half. I'm going to go to Uploads, and I am going to uh, upload those two pages that we just did. And that way you'll also be able to see them side by side or, you know, pretty easily. Let's see where this is going. Okay, so now we've created this one here, which has got the blue kind of background. And we've created this one, which has like the green, um, greenish background. So we are, um, what would you say? I guess we're well on our way. I guess it's the best word for it. Like we are well on our way to having a Beatrix Potter, um, Peter Rabbit digital kit. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Tomorrow's video, we will be back in the studio, and I do have a special treat for you guys for tomorrow. Um, I am actually going to be making a journal for my daughter and my granddaughter, and Miss Terry Sexton over at, um, oh, what is her, so, uh, 
I don't remember her um, shop name. I will have to, I'll have to um, pull it up. I want you to look at this kit, um, and I believe she is going to be listing it either tonight or tomorrow. So tomorrow's video, you will see me actually using this kit to create, um, I don't know how much I'll get done in one video, <clears throat> excuse me, but I will end up creating at least two journals with this kit, one of which will be a mini journal because it is for my 18 month old uh, granddaughter. And then the other one will be a full size journal for my daughter. Look at these horses. How beautiful. This is an Appaloosa here. That almost looks like a Frisian. I'm not sure. But look at this. I mean, this kit is just, it's stunning um, to say the least. So um, you'll see more of this kit tomorrow. Um, whenever I use it. And this image here, I told Terry, this image here reminds me so much of my fourth daughter and her first horse, Sweet Pea. Um, Sweet Pea was a Mustang, and this looks like a Mustang with the way the head is, with that white blaze, the, um, all that. And then Victoria's favorite color is red. And so this is what she, she loves to wear red. So, um, yeah, I'm going, this is my daughter. Um, this was at a rodeo here in town. She is the one that carries, this is on her, um, paint, but that's why it reminded me so much of her. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow in my craft room working on a beautiful journal from, um, a kit um, from Miss Terry Sexton. And as soon as she gives me the link to that kit, once it's in her Etsy shop, I will post that below. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening. And now we can relax and cool and keep the videos coming daily again. Bye guys.